Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm going to give it just a few minutes here, and uh, we are going to get started in just a moment. Um, Thanksgiving night 2020. Uh, I'm so glad that you're going to be joining me tonight. And again, I'm just going to give folks a couple of minutes, uh, the ones that are, are free tonight and uh, they would like to connect with us. Uh, I'm going to give you a few moments just to um, log in, get connected, and I'll share some, some thoughts that I want to give you on this Thanksgiving evening, Thursday night, 2020. Um, wow, what, what a year. What a year it has been. Uh, amen, amen, amen. Again, I'm just going to give it a few more moments here, maybe a minute or two, and allow people to get logged in. Um, I'm very, very grateful uh, for you that are joining me tonight on Thanksgiving. Um, I'm not planning on keeping you a long time tonight. I just want to share a few specific things uh, to our church family and uh, to anyone else uh, that's going to be joining us uh, and watching tonight. And then uh, later on, maybe you'll be watching this later after Thanksgiving, and um, uh, maybe a few things that we share will be a, will be a blessing to you. Uh, just a few more seconds here as people are logging in. Well, I certainly hope you've had a good day. Um, I, uh, I know it's been quite a year, and uh, the Lord has brought us here to another uh, day that we set aside in our nation um, that we give thanks. We, of course, enjoy family. Uh, for those that are able to gather with family, I know in some states uh, they're really frowning on any family gathering together, but uh, we thank God for our family. We thank God for our friends. We thank God for our loved ones. I know some people uh, may not be able to gather with their family in person, but maybe they FaceTimed them or Skyped or maybe just called on the phone and connected with, uh, with family and friends. But this time of year is a time that we gather around the dinner table, maybe you call it the supper table, and uh, we gather, we celebrate, uh, we remember things that we're grateful for. I shared a message this past Sunday, and I encourage you to go back uh, to the videos on our Facebook feed or our YouTube channel. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would love for you to do that. Um, you can go to YouTube and type in Christian Life Church of Belgium. And uh, we have a lot of videos there, devotions, Sunday services, messages, Bible studies. You can subscribe and uh, you will get alerts when we upload new videos. But I said all that to say last Sunday, I shared a message in our church entitled, How to Be Grateful in Bad Times. And I would venture to say no matter how bad this year has been, and there's a lot that we can be ungrateful for. Uh, maybe you've experienced a loss, maybe in your family, maybe someone you know, maybe it's been a job situation, economic crisis, of course, the whole pandemic, the political climate, this age of rage and unrest. There's a lot we could complain about and gripe about and get angry about, but there's a lot we can be very thankful for. In that message, uh, I shared, I believe it was four things specifically, that we can always be thankful for no matter how bad things are. And I encourage you to go back and listen to that. Tonight, I'm going to share with you what I'm grateful for. And of course, those things that I shared Sunday are part of that, but I'm going to go a little, little different route. I'm not planning on keeping you long, maybe 15, 20 minutes probably at, at the most would, would be my guess. Uh, and, and I'm just going to share with you a little of what I'm grateful for. 
Now, before I get into all of that, let me just say I hope you've had a good day. Uh, I hope that uh, you've enjoyed a time of feasting, a time of family. Uh, I hope you've uh, counted your blessings and the things that you have to be grateful for. You know, I contemplated uh, whether or not I should even do a devotion tonight. Um, I, of course, uh, was unable to, to go home for Thanksgiving, uh, home being Texas, uh, to see my mother and to see my sisters and to be with my family. Um, I'm hoping that I'll be able to do that at least at Christmas time, but during Thanksgiving, I, I wasn't able to make the 1,000-mile trip uh, down south. Um, so, uh, it's just been my family here, my wife and our, our daughters. My oldest daughter, of course, married. Her husband has come over, and we've had a time just to fellowship. And, and then I like to, because I'm involved with law enforcement, I always love to be able to connect when I can with uh, our law enforcement and uh, let them know that they're greatly uh, appreciated. So I hope you've had a good day. I hope maybe you've enjoyed some time with your family. But I also know that there are lots of people uh, that are alone. Um, they don't have family to connect with, or maybe their family lives a long ways and they're not able to travel during this time and, uh, and gather. Um, I know in some states, again, as I've already mentioned, they're limiting how many people can gather. So uh, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to connect with me tonight. I just felt like I would go ahead and do a Thursday night uh, little mini devotion, little mini Bible study. Now I want to say uh, for our church family uh, at Christian Life Church of Belgium here in Wisconsin, a couple of things I want to mention to you. First of all, um, please, please check your email. Check your email because uh, there's lots of information on the weekly email, uh, prayer requests that you need to be aware of, our holiday season schedule, um, and other things that I think are important. I usually try to put an uplifting, encouraging devotion in that email as well. Um, this Sunday, which of course I believe is November the 29th, uh, we're going to have church and I'm going to be sharing the first of several um, holiday messages, kind of getting into the Christmas season. I know tomorrow, Black Friday, lots of people that, you know, start a lot of, lot of Christmas shopping if they haven't already started that. Um, and this season of Christmas, I'm going to talk Sunday, at least I plan to, unless the Lord redirects, I want to talk to you uh, about the spirit of Christmas. I will be, we will be in person at our church. We're located at 309 Lakeview Drive in Belgium. Uh, and then we, we plan to be Facebook Live. And if you don't have a place to, to connect, I know there's lots of options on the internet. Uh, but if you don't have a place to connect, we would be honored if you would connect with our, our small church that uh, we're growing slowly but surely through all of this. Uh, we would be honored if you would connect with us. A couple of housekeeping items I do want to mention. Uh, this Sunday, uh, we again will have these Advent calendars. We've made these available and I'm going to make a very important announcement, church family, about these calendars. Um, the, the cost, we ask for a donation of $10. And uh, what you will receive is we have a very nice uh, devotional. Uh, these are not created by us. These are resources. I'm always looking for resources to help strengthen our church uh, help our church just stay spiritually connected through busy seasons. And uh, this is a wonderful devotion. Uh, it's got a daily devotion that you can do leading up to Christmas. Now, this, 
devotional calendar. Let me just show you. Uh, it's designed to start on December the 1st and continue until Christmas Day, December the 25th. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, the calendar, along with the devotion, my family plans to do together. Um, you know, Christmas is the time of year we, we kind of get distracted with uh, materialism. Uh, you know, buying gifts, going to specials, uh, surfing on the internet, living on our digital devices, holiday movies, and we kind of lose the focus many times about what the season is all about. I think this is a wonderful thing for our church to just kind of take the season of December, the month of December, and focus on what is important. Now, this calendar, I want to show you this, and I want to explain something, church family, for those that have already received the calendar, uh, but it folds out like this, and um, let me fold it back, and let me just show you, each day there is a, there is a window or a door that you open, uh, like this, and there is a scripture verse, and there's a little graphic, scripture verse and a graphic. Uh, that's day one, and then, of course, the next day, there's another one you can read together as a family, and there's 25 days. This begins December 1st, so if you haven't got yours yet, this Sunday, we will have them available, a donation of $10, and you can begin on December the 1st, which is Tuesday. Now, something we discovered, church family, so listen very carefully here. Uh, some of you have already purchased yours, but maybe you've not opened it. Maybe you've not looked at it. We discovered that some of these calendars have been misprinted. The printing here was accidentally printed upside down. Uh, now, there's only been a few that we've discovered like that, but I want you to go ahead and check your calendar, not the devotion, but the calendar. And if yours was printed incorrectly, we have a replacement for you Sunday, but you're going to need to get that Sunday in order to start this on Tuesday. So uh, we apologize. Again, this was something unforeseen. Uh, one of our members uh, got it, opened it, found it, sent me a picture of it. And so we looked through all of the remaining ones. And uh, out of, uh, I think we've got 16 or 18 left. Out of them, we only found two like that. So yours might be like that. So you might want to check that just to double check. I'm very excited uh, about the good things God is doing and the good things that the Lord is going to do. I want to tell you tonight about what I'm grateful for. Now, church, on this Thanksgiving 2020, I I'm going to be speaking specifically to our immediate church family. Now, I know there's a few of you that do not attend our services necessarily in person, uh, but you're part of our online family. Uh, you're part uh, of the family that's an extended family that watches online, and we're so grateful for that. I, I know right now we, we don't have hundreds of people watching us uh, live, uh, but we do have a few that, that connect with this online. You're part of that. And if you're not part of our immediate church family in person, but you watch maybe in a different state, maybe you watch uh, just online here in Wisconsin, I, I want you to know I am very, very grateful for you. I really feel like Paul, the Apostle. You see, Paul the Apostle said this in Philippians chapter 1. He said, I thank God for you 
whenever I think of you, because we have worked together for the gospel from the first day until the present, I'm confident that he who has begun a good work in you will go on developing it until the day of Jesus Christ. You know, I want to tell you, that's what I feel about you. I am thankful and grateful to serve as your pastor. Uh, I'm confident, very confident, that not only has God used you in the past, but I believe God's going to use you in the future. Amen. It's an honor of mine that I'm able to minister into your life, even if it's this way, right here online, virtually, uh, through YouTube or through Facebook, whichever way you are watching this. Uh, I thank you for the privilege. You, you, can, you, can, you can turn to a lot of different places and resources to, to, to watch uh, live broadcast and ministry, but the very fact that you're connecting with us, I want you to know I'm very, very grateful for that. And I do not take the responsibility of being a voice, of being a pastoral voice, a ministry voice, lightly in your life. I consider it, I'm going to tell you, I consider it a privilege to serve as a pastor to you, church family in Belgium, and to you that maybe count me as a pastoral voice in your life that watch virtually. I'm very grateful every day for that. Uh, you know, God allowed me the privilege to plant Christian Life Church here in, 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 uh, Wisconsin. Now, I want to say I'm extremely grateful for our mother campus and the vision uh, of Pastor Hanthorne at Mequon. Uh, he approached me about uh, being willing to step out and try to plant what we call a daughter campus, a satellite campus. We did that initially in Port Washington, the county seat. That's kind of where we thought would be an appropriate place to begin, right in the seat of the county. Little did we know that God was going to open a door and move us about 10 miles to the north to the village of Belgium, a smaller community uh, right there in the village of Belgium. But I want to tell you, God allowed me the privilege, my family and I, to move from Texas to be a part of a wonderful church in Mequon, but to step out in faith with the support and the prayers uh, and the vision of that campus to plan a church. And I have no doubt about it that it was God's work in my life, and I, God's done a work, and He used me. And I'm honored and privileged that He allowed me this privilege to help start a work. But I, you know what? I'm also reminded this is not my church. You know whose church this is? This is God's church. You know, I have to remind myself that I belong to you and that this is your church. It's God's church, but it's your church. Um, you know, you're, you're part of this, this church, but, but at the end of the day, it's God's church. It's not my church. God doesn't have to use me. I'm privileged to be used by God, but it's His work, and I'm just a conduit that, that He's allowed in this season to be able to help see this church grow. You see, we have to always hold whatever God gives us, we have to hold that with an open hand, not a closed fist. We can never have the attitude, it's mine, it's God's. And so I consider it a tremendous privilege to serve as a pastoral voice in your life. Here's what I want to do tonight in this last 10 to 15 minutes. I, I want a church family in Belgium and, and you that consider me a pastoral voice, I just want to kind of uh, brag on you for a moment. And uh, I, I want to give you five things that I'm grateful for in your life. And, and the first thing I want to tell you is I thank God for your love. That's right. You're a loving church. You're a loving people. Um, you know, when somebody has the privilege to walk into our church here in Belgium, Wisconsin, 
um, for the very first time, when we're able to get their name and contact information um, and, and they walk into our service, uh, we like to, I like to send them a thank you letter and just say thank you. There's a lot of places you could have gone, but thank you for choosing to worship with us at Christian Life Church in Belgium, Wisconsin. Um, you know, the very first time you come and we're able to get your contact information, that's what we like to do. And, and we like to express our gratefulness that you came to worship with us. You know, before we ever got into this whole COVID, pre-COVID, um, every week we would stand up and we would ask everybody to stand in the church and we would say, hey, I want you to turn around and shake somebody's hand, greet someone. And, uh, you know, we loved to do that. Now, right now, we're obviously not able to do the handshaking or, you know, we, we, we're a huggable church. Um, I come from the South and we like to hug people and, and that's in my nature, that's in my upbringing. And, and I have learned, you know, that for some people, that's the only physical contact, uh, the only affection, the only human touch that they, they, they get all week long is being able to come to church and somebody look them in the eye and tell them, you're valuable, you matter. You see, it's hard to do that when we're looking at a screen and me just telling you that, but man, I, I am hoping very quickly that we get this whole vaccine thing, that people, you know, some normalcy can come back. We can shake hands. We can hug necks. I, I, I don't want to see that disappear altogether because people need a human touch. People need to know they're valuable. People need to know they're loved. People, you know, sometimes in this culture, people don't get hugs anymore. They don't get handshakes hardly anymore. People are afraid. People are scared. I get that. But, you know, at Christian Life Church, we have tried to develop a culture that is very loving, very accepting. And so the first thing I want to tell you that I'm grateful for, I'm grateful for your love. Church, I'm grateful that you've loved my family and that you love one another. Here's something else I want to tell you. I thank God, and this may, this may seem kind of funny a little bit, but I thank God for your flexibility because you've had to put up with a lot of changes. That's right. You know, originally we, we started in a property that we rented in downtown Port Washington. And then we moved 10 miles away. And for some people, they, they had to adjust their driving distance, their schedules. Um, but then beyond all of that, during COVID, during this pandemic, we've had to go online. Uh, we, we've had to stop having, uh, at least for a season, we had to stop having Sunday services in person. And for a season, we, we had to stop having Thursday night services in person. We were having Bible studies and discussion. We were having fifth Sunday fellowships, and, and we would have uh, family night, family movie night, connect nights. We had to put all of that on hold. Now, we are back in person on Sundays, but on Thursdays, uh, we have decided through the end of this year, and who knows how 2021 will begin, but, but we've had to put that all on hold and go virtual. And so I just want to say, one of the things I'm grateful for, church, is you have stuck with it. You've connected with me online. Uh, many of you have connected through our Zoom call that we were doing on Monday night. Many of you have had to just kind of roll with the punches, and, and, and you've, you've kept giving. You've been generous, and, and, and that's the next thing that I want to say that I'm grateful for. Let me tell you, it takes unselfish people to build a church. You've been flexible. You've been willing to adapt. You've put up with inconveniences. Uh, you, you've rolled with the punches of 2020. And the third thing out of these five things that I want to tell you on this Thanksgiving night 2020 that I'm grateful for is I'm grateful for your generosity. Church, even when we had to shut down, you know, many of you have, have never been used to to, to giving online. 
And then some of you, uh, you, you, you've been faithful in mailing in your tithing. You don't know how much that has helped us. I want to tell you that your giving, your giving to missions has continued. Your giving to our building fund has continued. Your giving of your tithing has continued. I want to tell you one of the five things I'm grateful for is your generosity. You've given to missions. You've given to the church. You've mailed in ties. You've adapted to an online platform. Thank you, church, for doing that. You know, one of the things that, at least when your pastor remembers to say it, uh, when we have brand new people that come to our church, uh, one of the things that I like to say, but a lot of times I just forget to say it, but I've said it from time to time. One of the things that I like to say, you might find unusual, but a first-time guest that comes to our church, uh, many times I have been known to say that if you're a guest and this is the first time you've come to our church, we are asking you not to give. If you're a, if you're a visitor, don't give because we're not trying to get people to come to church with the sole purpose to try to get their money. We want people to give out of a willing heart and a desire to give. And so we've been known to tell a first time guest, don't give in the offering plate, just enjoy the experience. Now, obviously, if God puts it on their heart, they can do whatever they want, but we want people that come for the first time. We don't, we're not asking them to give. We're asking them to get. What do you mean? We, we want you to get blessings and an experience in our worship service. So I, I just want to say, you know, this has been a crazy year for a lot of people uh, in more ways than one. But economically, you know, some people's job situation has been very rough. Uh, single parents that are connected with our church, uh, those that are on a fixed income. I get it, the economy, the struggles. And you know what? Throughout all of that, you have given. And I want to tell you in Thanksgiving 2020, I am very, very grateful. You know, there's a myth, and the myth is I can't afford a sacrifice I want to tell you, though, you can, because if it's just one penny, that may be a sacrifice. You see, it's not the amount that you give. It's the attitude that you give. So I, I want to tell you, many of you have sacrificed, and many of you have given, and I want you to know that's the third thing that as your pastor, I am very grateful for. The Bible says that where your treasure is, there your heart is. And I know where your heart is. Your heart is with the Lord. Your heart is with your church family. And again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Number four, the fourth thing I want to thank God for in my life is I want to thank God for your faith. You see, You've been willing to step out on faith. You've been willing to adjust. You've been willing to take some risks. Uh, you, you've expected God was going to help us get through all of this. You've believed in the impossible. You know, many churches are known for what they're against more than what they're for. A lot of churches have a reputation for being negative. That's why people don't want to go to those churches because they're kind of negative. The question is what, not what do we, who do we think we are. The question is who do we think God is. And you see, the size of our God determines the size of our goal. And, and I'll say you have never really believed God until you've attempted something that you cannot do on your own. And church, I want to tell you, God gave us a building a couple of years ago by a generous donation. And God has helped us continue to meet the needs of that church, the needs of that property. So many have contributed and given. And, and, and let me just tell you, I thank God for your faith. You've trusted your pastor and what God's doing. And I thank God for you and your faith in, in the leadership of our church. Thank you so very much 
for that in this year. Here's the last thing I want to give you before we wrap up this Thanksgiving night together. I thank God for your vision. That's right. I thank God for your vision because you've been willing to make room for new people. Um, you know, our, our church is, even through this pandemic, we're seeing some people baptized. Uh, we're, we're seeing a, a, a little growth. We, we are hoping for more that God is going to send us for, uh, send us to. And let me tell you, why do we want to keep growing? 2021, we're going to believe God for a year of growth, not only numerically, but spiritually. We want to go higher and deeper at the same time, higher with God, but deeper in faith and growth. I don't know what the new year holds, but I know who holds the new year because one of the reasons we want to grow at Christian Life Church of Belgium, whether that's growing our online audience and getting new people connected with us online, but also growing in person numerically is because Jesus, everybody needs Jesus. People need the Lord. As long as there's one person within driving distance of Christian Life Church of Belgium, Wisconsin, and as long as there's one person out there in the virtual world that doesn't know Jesus Christ, we're going to keep growing. We're going to keep trying to push and connect, not for our benefit, because God wants everybody to know Him. And you, church family, you are a people of vision. There's a lot of things we don't have control over. Uh, I mean, you didn't choose your parents. You didn't choose where you would be born, what time you would be born. You didn't choose where or when you would be born. You didn't choose the natural talents and abilities. God gave that all to you and said, I want to be with you. I don't want you to be somebody else. I want to be you. You are uniquely formed and shaped by God. But I want to tell you this, church. There is one thing you do have control over. And you say, Pastor Harris, what is that? That is how much you choose and I choose to believe Almighty God. How much faith do you have? That's your choice. Amen. You and I have to choose how much we believe God. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles, and I want to tell you, I want you to be a part of what God's going to do in 2021 as we're getting to the close of this year. And if the Lord tarries, whatever God's going to do in 2021, we want to be a strong, growing church that's reaching souls for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, I invite you and your family to get on board, to get plugged in, whether it's virtual or in person, and to be a part of what God wants to do. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 16, 9, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are perfect toward him. God is looking for people to use. You don't have to be extraordinary. You just have to be available and you just have to say, God, I want to plug in to what you're doing. I want to be a part of the work of the kingdom. I want to serve in your life this year and into next year. I want to be able to connect with you. Please, email me, connect with me. If you're a regular watcher of this, let me know how I can serve you. Church family, get ready. I don't know what 2021 holds, but I am believing God for great things. I have a vision and a passion for winning souls right here in this part of the state of Wisconsin. And whoever God's going to lead us to, let's keep giving to the work. Let's keep giving to missions. Let's keep praying. Let's not be afraid and not get discouraged and not look down thinking all, all hope is gone. God is sovereign. He's in control. He's got the whole world in his hands. And he's going to have a church that is vibrant and strong and growing and advancing. Daniel, the book of Daniel said, those that know their God will be be strong 
and do mighty exploits. I want to close with prayer on this Thanksgiving 2020, praying for you and your family. Heavenly Father, I pray right now for all of our church. I pray, God, for those that are watching on our virtual church. I pray for our church family here in Wisconsin and our extended church family that maybe lives in another state that connects with us online. God, bless the work of the Lord during this season here as we get into the busyness of the holidays. And as we turn the calendar to 2021, help us be ready for all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to close and tell you, don't forget, church family, please remember to check your Advent calendar. See if you picked up one of the calendars that has a printing error. If you did, we have a replacement for you at Church Sunday. Check out our website, christianlifechurch.us. You can give online your tithe, offerings, whatever. You can connect with us. You can go on there and subscribe to our podcast. You can connect on our YouTube channel. We have weekly articles. Have a wonderful rest of your Thanksgiving evening. Lord willing, we'll connect with you Sunday morning at 1030. Have a great night. God bless you from my family to yours.